Welcome to the Hot Chicks Write Hot Books podcast with Jen Foster and Melanie Johnson, where authors give you their inside secret tips on how to be a successful best-selling author. Hi, welcome to Hot Chicks Write Hot Books podcast. I'm Melanie Johnson here with my co-host Jen Foster, and we have Dr. Shell that we're going to be interviewing to you today. First, I want to let you know that we have a couple announcements. We have our next book writing retreat coming up in the Dominican Republic, so we'd love for you to sign up for that. You can go to our website, Hot Chicks Write Hot Books, and sign up for the retreat. And we also are going to have a special promotion coming out, so I want you to watch your email box because Jen and I are launching a special product coming up up in uh, a short period of time so look for your email box for that and we're happy to have you here today so our special guest as I mentioned is Dr. Shell she's from Houston Texas which is my town so I'm <laughs> so glad to have her she has written a book and it's called I am woman our journeys health uh, for happiness and harmony so she is an expert in um, knowing how to make a woman feel really great about herself we're gonna hear about her journey and her background and she's gonna give us some really Really great inside tips from her book about how we can be beautiful and feel youthful and defy age. So welcome mm -hmm. Dr. Shell. Thank you. So good to be here. Tell us a little bit about yourself and your background and uh, who you are and how you got started in the medical profession. Absolutely. So um, I was born in India and um, I was there until I was five and some of the things that really got imprinted on my brain while I was in India was the level of poverty and uh, the indigent people who really didn't have anything. The other thing that got imprinted on my head in my head was the way women were treated and the role of women in the Indian society back then and of course we're talking about over 40 years ago not to give away my age but yes about 40 years ago um, so that was such an impactful time even though I was so young I have vivid memories of you know children in the streets without limbs and just beggars and it was just really really tough and women just having nothing um, I then moved to England um, Fast forward, moved to Pakistan, fast forward, moved to uh, the United States, started off in New Jersey, and then by the time I was 12, I had already lived in four different countries and uh, ended up in Atlanta, which is where I grew up most of my life. So here I was in Atlanta, and I always knew, because of the experiences, that I wanted to be a physician. Didn't know what kind of a physician I wanted to be, but I did know I wanted to be a physician. Well, as I went through college and medical school, really realized that my passion was to help women. To help women in, its in their entirety, not just these symptoms or these lab studies or you know, seeing 40 women a day or doing things of that nature, but I really wanted to impact women, not just the women that I see on a one-on-one -on -one basis, but women all over the world. Back then is when I decided one day I will write a book and that's how I'm going to reach the women all over the world. But it wasn't time yet. So finished med school, finished residency, and decided that I was going to go into OBGYN. So I did that, and it was the best decision that I'd ever made. Started my um, OBGYN residency and really enjoyed it. Loved the whole aspect of delivering babies and taking care of women from their adolescence all the way to geriatric, and just loved the entire stage of women's lives that they go through from menarche to childbirth to premenopause, perimenopause, menopause, and then all the postmenopausal stuff. So it was just great. Yeah. Fast forward, I moved to uh, Houston, and it was that was an interesting move because you know I knew I wanted to start my own practice because I wanted to do things my way. I wanted to practice medicine my way. There are so many things in medicine, and we can talk about that all day long, that I feel that really needs to evolve and change, and this is how we'll treat patients better. Um, so I moved to Houston on a whim because I got this great offer to start my own practice and uh, first weekend I was here, guess what? I meet my husband. Oh. So that's where, <laughs> yeah, that's destiny. It's fate. Love in Houston. Uh, sorry? You found love in Houston. I fell in love in Houston. First weekend I was here, I just met him in church and boom, the next day he gave me a call. We started dating. Within three months, we were engaged. Within nine months, we were married. 
It was oh, a whirlwind romance, but it was the best thing I ever did because we just celebrated 17 years. That's so, wonderful. Yes, it was great. Oh, congratulations. Yeah, so that's how I ended up in Houston. Now, I practiced OB-GYN, traditional OB-GYN, for the first 10 years of my career. And I loved every minute of it. I loved bringing, you know, babies into the world and taking care of women and doing their surgeries when needed, etc. But I realized something when I had my second child. So I was about 35 years old. I had uh, my second child, Zaid, who's, um, you know, great guy. But right after childbirth, I started feeling a lot of symptoms that I myself had treated a lot of patients for, but it's different when you feel it yourself. So mood swings, irritability, low sex drive, insomnia, some depression, tremendous amount of hair loss where I lost hair in chunks where I didn't even want to leave my house, weight gain, you name it, I had it. So, you know, I'm thinking as a gynecologist, okay, I'm going through some postpartum blues, maybe postpartum depression. I go in to see my gynecologist, who happens to be a friend of mine. And I go see her and I say, um, Lori, you know, I'm going through all these things and I don't know what's going on and I can imagine what's going on. And she said, well, you're just going through postpartum depression. Here is a, wait for it, Prozac prescription uh -huh. And, uh -huh, and a sleeping medication go home, take these, you'll be fine. Now ladies, you know as well as I do, I did not feel that I needed, I was not deficient in Prozac, okay? I did not have a Prozac deficiency, I did not need that. Some people may, I'm not saying that nobody does, but I, know, I knew inside I didn't. And I thought to myself, this probably happens to hundreds and thousands of women and they don't know what to do and they don't know where to go because they go to their ob -GYN and they get handed prescription medications and basically we in the medical field because I had done it before I was guilty of it I had done it mm -hmm. because I knew not, I knew nothing better mm -hmm. but when I went through it I knew that there was something more that was going on in my body right. so I started researching and studying and studying more and attending every conference I could because I was going to solve this and I wasn't going to solve it with medications mm -hmm. and I knew something was imbalanced mm -hmm. so I tested my hormones I did a saliva test tested my adrenals tested my thyroid, did a nutritional deficiency testing, and I looked at everything. It's almost like looking at a blueprint of your body. And I looked at everything and I realized that I was very estrogen dominant. My progesterone levels were in the tank. I had very low thyroid, but it was borderline low where doctors don't recognize it when it's borderline. They just recognize it when it's severely low. And I had a lot of nutritional deficiencies. And my adrenals, because of the residency years, no sleep, ob -GYN practice, no sleep once again, all those years, 15 plus years of going through stress and having two kids and building my house and all of that, it had just wiped my adrenals out. So I was in adrenal fatigue. Mm -hmm. Now you talk to doctors about adrenal fatigue, nobody understands that because we were not trained in that in medical school. Mm -hmm. After self-training, fatigue before, you know, yeah, fatigue, but not adrenal specific. Exactly, and adrenal fatigue is huge. In my practice now, there are hundreds of people that I see with severe adrenal fatigue where they can't even get out of bed. Now, adrenal fatigue happens in many different stages. You could be mild, moderate, severe, but adrenals are the two glands that sit on top of your kidneys that release cortisol. You've heard of cortisol, and right. that's the stress hormone. And the more we're stressed, the more activity we need from our adrenal glands. And after 10, 15 years of that, they're wiped clean. They don't have it in them, you, you see. So I, that's where I was. Mm -hmm. But with all the integrative you know, treatments that I started, I started natural bioidentical hormones because I don't believe in synthetic hormones. I don't think that anyone should have to go through those side effects and dangers. I do bioidentical hormones, balanced my thyroid, got on the supplements, I was me again. It's almost like you don't know where you went, but you're back now, you know, and life was just beautiful again. Yeah. And that's the day, yeah, that's the day I decided that I need to do this for thousands, and not just thousands, hundreds of thousands of women in this country and beyond who go through hormonal changes and fatigue and weight gain and hair loss and irritability and no sex drive and depression and anxiety, you, the, the symptoms just go on and on and they don't need to be treated with medications, rather we need to balance their lives and their yeah. hormones. 
Why don't so you tell us it? That's wonderful. Thank Why don't you tell us a little bit of the difference between the bioidentical hormones and sure. the synthetic? Tell us okay. the difference and and how you know if you're getting the right thing if you are on hormones. Okay, very good. So synthetic hormones are made by pharmaceutical companies. So those are synthetic hormones because they're made in a lab. They're made using synthetic products. And when you look at the biological, the chemical structure, so if you, for example, if you look at progesterone, the structure of progesterone in a, chem, in a chemistry book looks very different than the, you know, uh, progesterone acetate or Provera that is used in traditional medicine that is made by pharmaceutical companies. Mm -hmm. So they look nothing alike. So okay. essentially what happens is bioidentical hormones, the structure is precisely like the structure of our natural hormones. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like a lock and key method, right? So if you have a lock that looks like this, that has to have, is like a receptor, and you need something to bind to it, unless it's look, it looks exactly the same, it's not going to bind to it. Right. So essentially, you remember the WHI study that happened in 2002 when everybody wanted to get off their hormones. Mm -hmm. And it was the WHI study that had hundreds and thousands of women in it, and that was when everybody was told, get off your Premarin and your Prempro. You ladies probably remember that. Um, when that happened, it's because Premarin comes from a pregnant mare's urine. So mm -hmm. that estrogen has nothing to do with our estrogen. It looks right. nothing like our estrogen. And a pregnant mare has 99 types of estrogens. Human beings have three types of estrogens, estrone, estradiol, and estriol. So when you take a Premarin pill for about six months, later you might do your blood work and you could see metabolites from that one pill because your body doesn't know what to do with it. Right. That's why the study showed increase in breast cancer, stroke, heart disease, etc., mm -hmm. which is not theoretically true with bioidentical hormones. I hope that helps. It's a little scientific, but yeah. the main difference is bioidentical hormones look biologically identical to what mm -hmm. our bodies produce. Mm -hmm. Synthetic hormones look nothing like it. Great. So it would just be a different prescription of more yes. of a natural type of... Yes. Different prescription done by a doctor who actually knows because bioidentical hormones is more of an art. So mm -hmm. it's customized for each patient mm -hmm. and it's produced or it's made in a compounding pharmacy. A okay. compounding pharmacy is where they actually make the progesterone, the estrogen, the testosterone for each patient individually and it's a customized dose. And so you could, you know, have a patient, I have many patients who might be on one cream that has the bioidentical estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, all mixed together to their specific dosage, and they rub it on. It's beautiful. Yeah. Oh, it's so you don't have to take it, it's not inserted into you, or it's not a drug, or, I mean, it's mostly no. it comes in the cream form, the bioidenticals? Bioidenticals can come in cream, it can come in oral, it can come in sublingual, any of those forms. And in fact, recently we've also started doing pellets, which are little pellets, tiny, tiny pellets that are just inserted, you know, and they work over three to six months. So mm -hmm. there's so many cutting edge things going on, but the bottom line is you want to make sure that you go to a physician that knows about bioidentical hormones, is familiar with testing for it, and is also an artist in that they know how to customize it for each patient. Because there's no two people that are alike. We are mm -hmm. all unique and we all need unique types of things that so we might be deficient. You cover all this inside your book, correct? Excuse me? You cover all this inside of I do, I do. So in my book I talk a lot about, you know, why women need hormones and the difference between the two and the different things as far as the adrenals, the sex hormones, testosterone, why women also need testosterone, nutritional supplementation, as well as stress management with meditation and yoga and, you know, other things that we can do to lower our cortisol. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So talk a little bit about your nutritional supplements. What what do you suggest for women? Sure. Um, you know, even age twenty up to you know sixty. What do you suggest for nutrition and vitamins? Yes, uh, sure. That's a great question. So with nutritional supplements, I think it's very important again to customize it. So I could tell you the basics. You know, we all should consider getting our vitamin D tested. And if we're low, and you have to, you have to make sure that you're looking at: Are you borderline low? Because if you're borderline low, you need to be replaced. Your values should be over 60. 
So vitamin D is essential for women. Fish oil, so any kind of omega oils are very important. Mm -hmm. um, DIM, diendole methane is something that a lot of women don't know about. It comes from cruciferous vegetables and it has been proven to decrease your chances of breast cancer. And if, even if you've had breast cancer, it decreases the remission, I'm sorry, the relapse of breast cancer. So keeps you very healthy as far as your breast, your colon, your brain. So DIM is very important. It stands for diendole methane. I do suggest an overall strong multivitamin for most women if they have not done a nutritional deficiency test. So I've put together my own vitamin supplements where they're all medical grade. They're all, you know, because this is really important. You really have to make sure because the nutritional supplement industry, as you ladies know, is a multi-billion dollar industry. An average person will just go to GNC because they read something in the paper, listened to Dr. Oz, or you know, just heard something from a friend and just go pick up supplements for two to three hundred dollars. They don't know what they need. Everybody doesn't need the same things. And so what's really important, two things. Number one, if you have access to doing a test, that really looks at, looks at the micronutrient deficiencies inside your cells. There's a test that I use called SpectraCell, for example. Okay. Wherever you are, look up a doctor that does the SpectraCell. You would do yourself a favor by doing that because it looks at 33 different vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants inside your white blood cells and tells you what do you need to take. So what does Jen need to take, what does Melanie need to take, and what does Dr. Shell need to take. We all need to take different things. Number two, over-the-counter supplements. NIH has done a study where they've actually looked at over-the-counter supplements from places that you and I know about, but I won't mention, mention any names, but anything that's over-the-counter, 50% of the time, ladies, 50% of the time, it either didn't have what it says it has, it didn't have the right dosing, or it didn't have the absorbability in a human body. That's just crazy. So yeah. what you're essentially doing is when you buy supplements over-the-counter, half the time you're not even getting what you're paying for. They just Most go right through you. <laughs> it goes right through you, no absorption. So my patients are only on medical grade supplements that come from labs that are regulated because most of the industry is not regulated. And I've actually formulated my own supplements for menopause, for PMS, for the DIM, uh, for hair and nails and the skin, um, as well as uh, really hormonal balancing. So these are supplements that I've actually put together myself for women who might be going through the different stages of their lives, as well as a multivitamin that I put together. So it's really important to realize what is going on in your body, what may be deficient, and then these are the things that you might want to take. One thing I will mention, because you asked what should a general person be on, so if there is somebody who doesn't have access to the test and just wants to be healthy, I would say a probiotic, vitamin D, multivitamin, fish oil, and the DIM. Those are five essentials that you should be on. Hope that helps. Those are great. Yeah, hopefully all our listeners are taking notes. <laughs> That's okay. very, very good. Yes, how did you um, come about? I noticed in your book you had some stories of people too. So yes. how did you start to go about compiling your book and writing your book? That's a great question. So, you know, the way I started, and I'll tell you, um, one of the reasons that I wanted to write my book, and it was very important for me to write my book, is one of the experiences that I went through myself. You know, a lot of us women go through experiences, and you know, women like yourselves who are ultra successful, people look at you and they don't know what you might have gone through in life. They don't know your pains. They don't know your personal story. And I feel that it's very important for women who want to... Uh, work on uplifting other women who are blessed and who are privileged to have an education and to have a career and to be able to affect and impact other women to tell their story. So that was one big reason that I wanted to do that, but my big reason also was because my um, best friend, my very best friend in medical school, I knew her through college, through medical school and through residency. She was sort of my soulmate, you know. In addition to my husband and my sister, I say that she's my third soulmate. Um, she took a gun and killed herself at the age of 29. Oh my God, so sad. And it was one of the most traumatic things that I've ever gone through because when that happened, and she was in the prime of her life, she was 
a physician. She was beautiful. She had an amazing personality. I mean, she was gorgeous inside and out. She was just an amazing person, and she ended it all because she went to such a dark place, and she didn't know how to get out. And if I had known all that I know now, I could have helped her to really see that she should not have taken her life. She could, you know, overcome whatever it was that she was going through, and the biggest thing was she was going through a divorce. Well, 50% of this country goes through a divorce. It's okay, but it's not okay when you're in a dark place and you feel alone and you have low self-esteem and you have imbalanced hormones and you're going through depression. It's not okay. It can end really badly. So that was a huge reason that I wanted other women out there to know that you are not alone. You don't have to end your life. And when you do, the impact on the people that love you is huge. And so that was a huge thing for me that I wanted to write my book for. The other big thing was I lost my brother to a uh, very random um, shooting. He was shot to death, and he was only 25. He left behind an 18-month-old um, daughter and a 9-month-old son. It was horrible. It was the worst thing that our family has gone through. And the worst part of it was it happened in front of my mother's eyes. Oh, wow. Now, if you two are mothers. I know I am. That's the worst possible nightmare any mother can go through. So I saw a decline in my mom after that and she was no longer the person that she once was but she picked herself back up for the four other kids and she fought and she fought and I learned so much from her strength and her desire and willingness to be there for her family that I felt that these two stories are really worth telling and it's really worth telling other people's stories so that the readers really look at it and say you know what I relate to this person. This person came out at the other end and was able to overcome because they did the right things. They worked on their minds, their bodies, their spirit. They balanced their hormones. They paid attention to themselves. They took care of themselves. They exercised self-care. If this person can do it, so can I. You know, that's the inspiration that I really wanted. So I asked my patients, who are wonderful women, and I'll tell you, they learn from me, but I learn from them as well every day. And they're my inspiration. And I asked them, I said, would you do me the honor of being a part of my book and tell your story? Mm -hmm. And they loved it. They embraced the idea because they had come through a journey and they wanted other women to also come on the other side. So it was great. It's really great. And I, I really appreciate their honesty. So, you know, we spent a lot of time talking and I interviewed them and it, most of the chapters are in their own words. It's really amazing and so many of these stories are so touching. So touching. So I hope you've liked reading them. Yeah. And I love that you you, you know being a writer being a writer is vulnerable. And being able to show that in front of you and touch people with your story, which you did after you gave me goosebumps while you were telling me those stories. Thank you. It's, you know, yeah, and it's all about just dropping the barriers and really allowing others to come in because, you know, a lot of us are so uncomfortable. Well, I don't want people to know this about me or I don't want people to know that about me. And certainly there are some personal things that, okay, don't share it. But if it's going to impact other people's lives positively, then I feel that we have a duty, an obligation. You know, we should do this. In fact, yesterday, I was seeing a patient of mine, amazing woman, has three amazing children, and she had breast cancer last December. She went through a lumpectomy, radiation, chemotherapy. She was in here, and you know what she said? She said, Dr. Shell, I feel that my breast cancer was a blessing. And so first I had to took me back and I said, well, tell me why. She said, because the amount of closeness that we have with my family, my kids, my daughter never missed a chemotherapy, never. She was there with me by my side every chemotherapy. She's a senior in high school. She's going to be going away. But this experience that we had was amazing together. And she also talked about many other things that were such a big blessing for her. But these are the women that need to tell their story. And I told her yesterday, you need to write a book. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, think about her story that she needs to write. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to send her to you guys. <laughs> yeah. You can help her get her message out. 
<laughs> and, you know, that's one of our special things is we love to be able to share people's message and leave a legacy. Absolutely. And that's what you've done too with your book is leaving yeah. a legacy for uh, the people behind of what you've learned and sharing yes. the passion. Yes, it's amazing. It's such an honor and privilege to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. So true. Yeah. What advice would you give uh, people who want to write a book or authors, things that you learned along the way of doing and doning, doing and not doing with your book? Sure. Well, first and foremost, write from the heart. If you're writing because you want to make a bunch of money or, you know, whatever the other reasons might be, don't do it. Do it because you want to reach people, you want to make an impact, you want to tell your story, you want to help others, right from the heart. And money will come. If it comes, great. If it doesn't come, well, you still helped a lot of people. So do it for the right reasons, number one. Because if you do, you're going to love every minute of it. But if you're doing it for the wrong reasons, writing a book can be frustrating because you, know, you have to go through many different um, edits and you have to go through many different stages and all of that and if you're not in it for the right reason you might lose the steam but if you are in it for the right reasons you're going to hit the number one you're going to get up there you're going to tell your story and you're going to love every minute of it so that would be the biggest thing I would say if you feel like you want to tell your story and if you feel like you want to do it for the right reason you're going to be successful hire the right people to help you we're not born with the knowledge about how to write a book, how to get it on Amazon, how to publish it, how to get it to be number one. We're not born with that knowledge. Hire great people like yourselves who can help you to figure out how to do it, get your thoughts on paper, inspire you, give you the setting which you need to actually get in there and dig deep in and write that book and then let them do the other process because it's technical. Not everybody's made for that. But there are people who specialize, like yourselves. So I would say definitely get the right team in place uh -huh. if you want to get the message out. And number three is let go. Just get the right team, put the story on paper, get your book out, and then just let go and watch it flourish and enjoy every minute of it. And don't forget to celebrate. That's one thing that I, um, I had to be reminded by a good friend of mine. My first book signing was at the Texas Conference for Women. And, you know, it was amazing, and I spoke, and I signed books, and it was just amazing. And afterwards, I had, I had coffee with her that evening, and she said, did you take a minute to celebrate? Like, what did you do to celebrate your book? And I said, well, uh, nothing yet, you know. And she said, you need to celebrate. This is huge, you know. And when she said that, I realized we do so many things in life, and we don't, and we just forget to celebrate, so don't forget to celebrate. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Yeah. I love, I love that. Thank you. <laughs> That's really great. Well, I think you kind of answered the last question for us, which we were going to ask, which is why, you know, why people should write a book. But that you just answered that, so I love all of your. Oh, you thank saying you. About it was huge book. for me. It was huge for me, and I think you know, for me, to be honest. I see patients in my office and it's amazing. So I feel I feel humbled and I feel privileged to be changing lives on a one-on-one -on -one basis because I, I don't see 40 patients a day anymore. I see quality. I spend anywhere between 30 minutes to an hour with each of my patients. I get to know my patients. I get to know their pain. I get to really delve into what their stressors are, what their imbalances are. Are they meditating? Are they taking time for themselves? Are they getting a massage? Are they balancing their hormones? Are they taking their supplements? All of it. You know, we get into all of it. And I try to really teach them one very important fact, and that is a lot of women think that when they take care of themselves, when they do something for themselves, that they're being selfish. And I tell them, take that word out of your vocabulary because it's not selfishness, it is self-preservation. It says, though, so when we are flying on a plane and the flight attendant tells us, in the case of an emergency, when the oxygen masks come down, put the first one on yourself and then put the next one, even if it's a child, put the second one on your child because if you're not well and if you're dead, they will not be taken care of. So you have to take care of yourself first, and that's preserving yourself, and that's the best thing you can do for your family. 
And so once I explain that to them, I feel like they take ownership and they're happy to take care of themselves, which is huge. It's really important for women to do that. So, you know, for me, it was like I'm making all this impact in my office. Now I want to get on a mountaintop and yell on from the mountaintop and tell all the women all across the world, take care of yourselves. Yeah. What's the bet what's a better way to do that than a book? <laughs> right? So that's why made me write a book. And we just have to get it in the hands of every single person out there. <laughs> now, what kind of a doctor would you describe yourself? Because you're an OBGYN, yes. but then you're also really a medical doctor. So, oh, absolutely. I mean, so, the kind of medicine that I holistic I've too. So, what's that? And like, kind of holistic and natural. Yes. So, the kind of medicine I practice now is more functional and integrative medicine. I would, and integrative medicine is a field where you take what you've learned in traditional medicine, mm -hmm. take holistic technologies and procedures, combine the two so that you can take the best care of patients. So the medicine that I practice, you know, keeps in mind everything that I was trained in as a medical doctor, as an OB-GYN, but also all the new cutting edge things like nutrition, extremely important, but test for it. Your gut, hugely important because how many of us, and I'm not trying to be gross, but how many of us have bloating, gassiness, constipation, GI issues, how many people, and it's millions by the way, that are diagnosed with IBS, that just are not healthy in their gut, and their doctor just says, oh, you have IBS, take these medications, blah, blah, blah. No. I have treated IBS totally naturally for hundreds and hundreds of people, and the way you do it is see what food sensitivities you have. Get rid of inflammation. Get on digestive enzymes, probiotics, protease. Their inflammation is gone. They start losing weight. They start feeling great. So the gut is very important. I take care of their stress. I take care of their adrenals. I take care of their sex hormones. And just balance all of that to be able to come up with energy, revitality, rejuvenation, great moods, balanced you know, outlook, happiness. Getting, you know, being able to get up in the morning and loving the day, you know, going to work out, spending time with your kids, everything that you wanted to do but can't because your, you know, your imbalances get in the way. That's what I want for the women out there, and that's what we do. And once they're feeling great, then I have an entire area of my practice that does aesthetics. So we do all kinds of lasers, skin tightening, cool sculpting, body sculpting. We do. Um, you know, laser rejuvenation, resurfacing, microneedling, using platelet-rich plasma. So everything that is cutting edge but non-surgical and non-invasive is what we do. So women actually look 10 years younger without any surgery. You do the inside and the outside. There you go, exactly. Inner, inner beauty and outer rejuvenation. It's great. It's fun. Now, if someone was looking for your type of doctor and they lived in a different state, yes. uh, what would they Google or, or search for? You know, the first thing they might be able to Google is they can Google functional medicine. Okay. They can Google bioidentical, excuse me? Functional, you said? Functional medicine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They can Google bioidentical hormone replacement because most integrative doctors will not give synthetic hormones. We customize. So they can Google bioidentical hormones. They can Google um, integrative medicine. They can Google nutritional therapy. They can Google those kinds of things that you know they want to do holistically and naturally. They can also Google holistic medicine. Mm -hmm. And most of the times you'll find medical doctors that do this. Now in certain areas of the country, there's great naturopathic doctors as well that have a license to prescribe like in Arizona and California. Um, they can also, if they're only worried about nutrition and want to start there, they can even look for a chiropractor that practices nutrition. So there's a, a lot of well-trained doctors, but obviously I'm partial to somebody who knows all the traditional medicine you know, um, field as well as the integrative so that they can combine the two and really have the best results. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think here in Utah, in Salt Lake City, um, they have medical weight loss clinics, yes. medical spas, which is similar to what yeah. you're describing you have, um, yeah. and then again, the butt. To, to search bioidentical hormones. Yes. yes, and I would I would really uh, implore all the listeners, if you've never looked into bioidentical hormones, 
please do. And don't think that just because you're not menopausal, it means you don't need any bioidentical hormones. I was 35 when I got on bioidentical progesterone. It changed my life. You don't need estrogen until you hit menopause, but you do need progesterone because we have very low progesterone starting in our 30s. And that's what causes a lot of the weight gain, irritability, mood swings, um, fatigue, low sex drive, all of that starts around the late 30s, early 40s, and then just keeps getting worse. If you haven't looked into that, consider looking into it and consider getting a saliva test. Saliva is the best way to really see what's going on with your body as far as hormones go. Well, right. give us some tips in your book you talked about uh, aging, the secret. Yes. Aging. So what is the secret? What's the Dr. Shell secrets <laughs> for aging? Well, that we shouldn't age. <laughs> <laughs> well, why don't we like just... All the things we already touched on, I'm sure it's a lot of that. Yeah, it's a lot of that, and I think a lot of it is, and you know, I'm not trying to sound cliche, but really focus on three things. Not just your body, not just your mind, not just your spirit, all three, mind, body, and spirit. And so let's, let's just kind of summarize that. With the body, it's a lot of what I talked about. Make sure your gut is healthy. Make sure you're not inflamed. So if I had to give one tip as far as how you should eat, if there's one word, think paleo, P-A-L-E-O. Basically cut out gluten, cut out sugars, cut out dairy. The best thing to do is get a food sensitivity test and see how sensitive you are to these things. But if you don't have access to, can't afford it, whatever, cut those three things out, drink lots of water, 10 to 12 glasses of water a day, and really focus on organic greens, vegetables, fruits, organic lean meats, nuts, and healthy fats, you're going to be good. You're going to lose weight, you're going to have energy, you're going to sleep well. So diet, very important. Water, very important. Detoxify. I do a self-detoxification at least three to four times a year, which is a two-week detox kit that you know I've put together and my patients love it. It's two weeks, it's really not difficult, but it detoxifies your body. Really try to go organic in everything that you do. Balance your hormones. Get it tested, get it balanced. Balance your nutrients. Get it tested, get it balanced. Decrease your stress. Try to limit your stress. Now, you know, I say that, and most of us will be like, well. And done, Dr. Shell. What's that? That's very easy to say versus exactly. being able to do it. So that's exactly what I'm going to talk about, because you can't decrease the stress, because you can't, you know, get rid of your husband and your kids and your work, and, you know, you just can't. You just got to do everything. So what I tell my patients, and I give them an actual prescription pad, and I say, one hour of me time per day. Now, you think, I don't have an hour. Okay, fine. Start with 30 minutes. We all have 30 minutes, trust me. We can find it. We got to get our husband involved, our kids involved. And in that 30 minutes, what are you going to do? What I would suggest, meditate. And you don't have to go anywhere to meditate. You don't have to know how to meditate. You just do deep breathing exercises. There's a ton of free meditation guides, guided meditation on YouTube. Mm -hmm. But do something, quiet time, inner reflection, breathing, focus on breath. That is going to do wonders for you. And if you don't think you can do 30 minutes, do 10. Do 5. Do something. Start with something. Exercise. Huge. You know, very important. Try to get it into your schedule. Three to four days a week is where you want to start. Make sure you're doing cardio as well as resistance. Very important. So when you do all of those things, your body's going to be starting to get balanced. Your mind, really stimulate your mind. Have positive people around you. Have positivity. If somebody's giving you negative thoughts, they need to go away from your life. You just need to keep a positive ring around you. Read positive books. Read things that make you feel better. Go do something that makes you laugh. Laugh a little bit. Stimulate your intellect a little bit. Have good discussions. And then your spirit. Again, back to inner reflection. Extremely important. And really, if we do those things, our body is going to start really slowing down the process of aging. There's actually a scientific way, I don't know if you've heard of this, a scientific way to measure your biological age. Have you ladies heard of telomeres? No. Okay. Telomeres are amazing. So I do this on my patients and you, you know, so I know how old I am. You know I'm 21, right? You know that. That's right. right? <laughs> so regardless of your chronological age, your biological age could be 10 or 15 years younger. And really, just to be honest with you, my telomeres are really, really long. 
what that basically means is it's like the tip of your shoelace. So when you have the tip of your shoelace, which is the plastic tip, that tip will get shorter and shorter as we age biologically. And at one certain point, the tip will be gone, the shoelaces will fray, and that means lots of chronic diseases, lots of health issues. So you can actually measure your, your biological age and compare it to your chronological and see where you are. And it's very accurate. It's amazing. So we know that one of the biggest things, and this is through Johns Hopkins, one of the biggest things that decreases the telomere length is, do you want to guess it? Stress. Yes. You win the jackpot today. <laughs> it is stress. It is stress. And that's something that, you know, when you said, you know, we can't decrease stress, you're right. Because we, you know, women, we have to do everything. You know, we're working, we're doing everything at home. You know, we're very lucky if we have husbands that actually help us. I am very blessed in that department, so I feel very, very blessed. But not everybody is blessed there. So you're carrying, you know, 20 different balls, juggling 20 different balls on a daily basis. Right. And you really can't afford to let one go. But if you really think about it, maybe there are a few balls that you don't need. Maybe you don't need to be on the board of this or the board of that right now. Maybe later, but not right now. Maybe you need to narrow things down. Maybe you need to simplify your life. And if you can't do any of that, just give yourself that 30 minutes a day. Yeah. That's Great what I advice. Absolutely. Yes, wonderful tips. Advice. Thank you. And one more thing. Can't forget this. There are great non-invasive procedures that you can do <laughs> to make yourself look beautiful. So wherever you are in the country, find a doctor, not just a med spa that doesn't have doctors. Find a doctor who's on site and who is really passionate about helping women look their best and go there for consultations. Mm -hmm. That would be the, you know, why not? Why not get prettier skin? Why not get a little Botox or something if that's what makes you feel better? Do what makes you feel better because it's all about you. Yeah. That's I very good. Yeah. I love it. Yay. So but, tell us, you had this incredible book. Mm -hmm. Tell us now, how, is it, how have you used it in your business? One last thing, I want people to know like, how a book can sure. help them. With sure. their business. I know it's, it's spread the word and you've done wonderful things and told great stories to help women, but does it help your business too um, in reaching out and giving women more? Absolutely. So, yes, it does. Short answer is, yes, it has helped tremendously. Number one, it builds credibility. Number two, it's gotten me on countless TV shows. Uh, because I'm an author and they want to hear about my book. So when I get on TV shows, what happens? Phones start ringing, email inquiries happen, you know, there's the big cycle that happens after that. Number three, whenever, and I do a lot of speaking around the country and sometimes internationally, whenever I speak, I try to make it a point to attach a book signing to that. So all the people in the audience, they are more interested because you're an author. Now it's really incredible because having that author title is huge even today. And you might think, well, a lot of people write books, but you know what I just heard, and this is really interesting. One percent, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but this is a statistic that I just heard. One percent of people who want to write a book or think about writing a book will ever start writing a book. One percent of those people will ever finish writing that book. 1% of those people will ever publish that book and 1% of those people will ever be successful with that book. Is that about correct? Yeah. Isn't that a crazy statistic? And so if you ladies can help people write that book, they are in that top 0.0001% of the people that ever wanted to write a book. Isn't that crazy? So when you have the title as an author, that's huge. The credibility is huge. Your patients that come to see you, they think, oh my God, Dr. Shaw wrote a book. You know, and it's great because it allowed me to say all of those things that I don't have time to say to each and every one of my patients in each visit. Mm -hmm. So most of the people that walk into my doors will buy a book. Most of the people, and we have a pretty strong email list, most of those people have bought a book because they're interested in what I have to say more than the emails that I can send them. So it's really done a great, great thing for my business, my personal brand, uh, my national recognition, my media. It's just been great. Wonderful. It'd be better, <laughs> but it's been great. <laughs>
I'm so glad awesome. to hear that. Well, you have just been tremendous, awesome. You've given us so many wonderful tips for women. Thank so you. Many, and, and actually, not even just for women, for anybody. Yes. A lot of that applies to everybody. Absolutely. A lot of the wellness things I spoke about, even the hormones, because mm -hmm. bioidentical hormones really applies to men because men starting at the age of about 35, 40 start going through what's called andropause. I don't know if you ladies have heard of that, but that's male menopause, where their testosterone's really tank. And with that comes weight gain, fatigue, belly fat, hair loss, low energy, low libido, right. brain fog, no mental clarity. So really applies everything that I said on the wellness and really applies to men as well, including the stress aspect. Mm -hmm. It's great. Well, where can they find you? So my website is drshell.com. That's D-R-S-H-E-L.com. And in that website, there is information on all the types of things that I spoke about, all our services. Um, they can sign up for a free ebook on weight loss and some other things and uh, get on our newsletter list. They can also go into the product section if they are interested in getting my book. So they just go into products and they'll see my book, they'll see my personalized supplementation, the things that we discussed and many other things. I've recently come up with a webinar series on hair loss because hair loss affects about 65 million men and women in this country. And so there's a great webinar series that I've come up with that really talks about the the role that everything has to play with hair loss, the causes, the symptoms, and what we can do about it, as well as a lot of hair loss supplements and products. So everything is on the website, but if there's anything that your listeners or your audience needs, they just need to send us an inquiry form if they have questions. We always welcome questions, and anything we can do to inspire and help men and women out there, that's what we're here for. That's wonderful. That's great. Well, thank you so much for coming, and we're going to make your book available on our website as well as one of our podcast interviewer hot chicks. Yay! We'll uh, have it there for people to find who are watching and listening to the podcast. And, and that's at uh, EliteOnlinePublishing.com. Wonderful. And just FYI, if, if your listeners need to give us a call, it's 281-313-SHELL, S-H-E-L, that's 7435. So anything thing that anybody needs, even if it's just a question, if you live in California, don't hesitate. Just give us, shoot us an email or give us a call. That is so nice. Well, yeah. thank you so much. It was such a pleasure. I think we're all smarter today because, well. Uh, oh, you're so sweet. Thank you. And I've learned a lot from you ladies, too. So I hope to stay in touch. And best of luck. You guys are doing such an incredible job to get people's stories out there. Thank you for doing that. Oh, thank you so much. So, And thanks for reminding everyone. We want to remind you again, um, if you want to go on a retreat and go down to the Dominican and stay at a private villa with our own private pool and write your book on the beach, um, go sign up at Hot Chicks Write Hot Books. And we are taking hot guys. And we think everybody <laughs> is a hot, girl, a hot chick and everybody's a hot guy. So come on down and join us and go to our website, hotchickswritehotbooks.com, and you can sign up for the retreat there. And then Jen and I are launching our special product coming up to help you write your book and launch your book and get your book published. So look for that. Those emails are going to be coming out soon. So thanks again for joining us, and yes. we'll see you next time. Thank you. Take care, Melanie and Jen. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. For more information, you can visit our website at hotchickswritehotbooks.com or you can text your name and email address to 832-572-5285.